welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to be entering into our world of magic as we continue our process of painting up the playing pieces from Hero Quest. Today we're going to be painting up the skeletons, and these are ones that are not going to use an awful lot of colour, because being skeletons, they're mainly bone. And these particular minis don't have an awful lot of additional details added to them. Now because of that, they're not one of my favourites, but they are exceptionally quick to paint. These are probably the easiest minis in this set to paint up, so they're not going to be much of a challenge, but they are going to be quick. Let's get to painting. Now normally you might spray a primer onto these and being skeletons go for a white but I actually really really like the colour of plastic that these have been moulded in. It's a really nice kind of creamy slightly off white so I'm just going to leave that as it is and apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade straight over the top of the bare plastic which is going to seep into all of those crevices and pick out all of the dark areas Areas and make this skeleton look three-dimensional. Now this is a really nice model for applying a shade or a wash too because it's got lots of deep cuts and sharp details to it especially between the ribs and down the vertebrae on the back. You just have to watch that that doesn't pull too much um, especially on top of the shoulder blades and inside the pelvis area so just thin that out in those areas. Once that's completely dry, the skeleton looks a bit too dark, a bit too brown. So I'm punching up that colour using some wraith bone, and this is a really, really nice colour. It's not too much of a stark white, it's got a nice creaminess to it. So I'm just using a really wide, flat brush in order to dry brush that on. Obviously dry brushing most of the paint is off of the brush, having been brushed off onto some newspaper, and I'm just applying that over the raised areas. Gives this really nice contrast between the raised bone and the deep shadow where you've got that nice depth and darkness in there. And that looks really nice but I just want to punch that colour up a little notch further so I'm using some pure white and dry brushing that on top of the wraith bone just a little bit just to make it brighter. Then going to go back and using a very fine brush just apply in a little bit more of that Agrax Earthshade just where some of that white has gone into the crevices where you don't want it, particularly between the ribs here. And that will just cover it back up and just do any kind of touch up work where you want it to be dark but that light colour has gone in just to make it really nice and neat before going on to the next step. And with the bones of the skeleton done, he's pretty much there. There's very little left to do on this guy other than the scythe and the base. So for the scythe, I'm going for a very, very dark brown and I'm using a very fine brush just to carefully paint it around those areas of bone, particularly around where his hands are holding onto the shaft of that scythe and where the scythe overlaps or his arm overlaps the scythe. Just where that wood meets it, we need to be very careful. Once that's then applied, you can go in with a thicker brush in order to fill in the rest of the shaft of the scythe and to get that nice dark wood look in there, ready for cutting down some heroes. With that dark brown dry, I'm then going over with a dry brush of a lighter brown just to break up that colour so it's not one single block of colour. It's a bit of an odd shape for doing dry brushing on so you're not going to get a lot of detail picked out but it will break up that brown so it's not just a solid dark brown. You're going to get some mottling and some different shades on there. And with the scythe shaft done it's then on to the blade and going back to one of my favourite paints for doing metals. This is a Humbrol Metal Coat Polished Steel, which is a really, really dark colour. It dries a really, really matte, dark metal colour, but once it's dry, you can actually then literally buff it off, polish it with a cloth, and it has this really lovely shine. Another thing with this paint is that it 
kind of dries quite clumpy and thick. If you apply it as it starts to dry, then you can get this really nice kind of rusted texture and it kind of breaks it up and makes the blade look older. I'm also going to apply this polished steel to the base. I've decided to paint all of the Hero Quest figure pieces with a base colour in this polished steel because it gives it's a nice interesting base colour um, when it's shined up and it's got a bit of texture to it but it doesn't distract too much from the overall figure uh, and it's not as complicated as having to paint individual flagstones. Again, as that paint starts to dry, it gets clumpier and thicker. So by stippling it onto the base with an old brush, you can get some really nice textures onto there, which once they are polished and buffed up, will give a really interesting finish. A little bit of polishing and buffing on the scythe blade and that will give it a nice sheen but without it looking too new and shiny. The scythe shaft is quite thin and fragile so you have to make sure you support it with your fingers so that it doesn't snap when you're doing this. Then going to use a different metal coat, this time a polished aluminium and stipple that onto the blade which makes it a bit more shiny but also makes it look more used and worn and it breaks up that single blade colour making it look much more interesting. I want the blade to look rusty and used so I'm applying a thin glaze of this purple red here. I've mixed the acrylic paint with a little bit of water in order to thin it down and just kind of applying it over the blade and wiping off some of the excess so it gives it this little bit of a transparent see-through ready purple which could be rust or could be blood. Once that's dried and faded down a little bit I'm then going to go back over with the same purple red and blob it on, kind of stipple it on with, you can see here, a really old splayed brush um, which I don't use for a lot of detail but it's great for this kind of stippling, getting that kind of spattered blood onto the blade and it looks this color really nice and old and dried griminess and with the figure finished being painted it's time to finally buff up that base bring out some of that nice texture that's been stippled on and give it a nice sheen so it's gonna look good when it's on the board you can see that those polished highlights really do bring out the texture, adding an extra bit of flavour and interest when it's on the board and moving in the light. And that's him done. There really is not much to this figure at all. It's pretty much all bones. And once you've got the recipe down for doing bones and bringing out the detail nicely, there's not a lot else to him. So I hope you found that useful. If you'd like to tell us how you get on with painting, please leave a message in the comments below. Or if you've got any of your own tips or tricks that you'd like to share, please get in touch. Please remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen here. And there's going to be plenty more of this coming up. Until next time though, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.